Well, hi, good afternoon. I'm going to talk about from design thinking to creative confidence. So you're all familiar with design thinking. You know, five years ago, maybe not to this group, but to many groups, I would start here and I'd say, well, this is what design thinking is and stuff like that. And I don't need to do that, right? Because most of you are practitioners. But I do want to point out something about design thinking that you may have thought about and you may not have, which is it's kind of simple. What we find with clients the first time out, you know, they read a book about design thinking or they do one workshop on design thinking and they understand it, right? They understand it intellectually and that's great and that, that process of going from zero to one is so like much fun and like in guiding people on that journey and we're happy to do that and it doesn't end there. And so when I say going from design thinking to creative confidence, what I mean is this. I mean from understanding intellectually the rules of design thinking to embracing design thinking or other creative tools as your go-to methodology, right? When confronted with a really hard problem that you don't see the answer to yet, you say, I don't know the solution, but I know a way. I trust a way and you apply the tools of design thinking, that's creative confidence. Let me just say my working definition of creative confidence has two almost equal parts. Part number one is natural human ability to come up with a creative idea. But for creative confidence, you need not just that, you need the courage to act, right? The courage to leap, the courage to stand up for your idea, to prototype it, to push it forward. I say my idea, I'm new in this company, I'm the, the most junior person here, I'm at the bottom of the org chart. I say my idea, I might damage my career. And so they tell me, didn't speak, didn't say their idea. They weren't sure it was a good idea. And so therefore, I'm not sure, but I know one thing for sure, I know that faced with the challenges we have in all kinds of organizations today, we need a lot of ideas. We need to hear their idea. We need to get it out on the table so that people with senior, more seniority can debate it, can work on it, can build on the ideas, and then evaluate, and maybe it is a good idea and one that we should implement, right? And so this is what we need in ourselves, in our organizations. We need creative confidence. We need both that natural ability, but also the courage to act. And so I want to talk about five elements. You could say five behaviors of creative confidence. With creative confidence, you start before problem solving. I have personally worked with 1,500 different clients in my ideal life, and let me just say, they're all pretty good at problem solving, right? Every client I've worked with, pretty good. Some of them, very, very good, but gotta know what problem to solve, starting before the problem is identified, right? And so, for example, see the problem here? A lot of people don't because this is what they call the status quo, right? Old people have been doing this for 50 years at least, maybe 100, which is you go to the pharmacy, right, and you get your meds, your prescription meds. Bring the medicines home, then you got to put them into these pill sorts. It's time consuming. It's tedious. It is susceptible to errors. They went from the metal pill sorter sorters that rusted to the plastic pill sorters that just break and you know, live on the bottom of the ocean for the, for the rest of time, right? But big innovation there. So any part of your industry, no innovation for 50 years, you, you know, like a red warning light should be going off in your head like, ooh, look at that, look at that, look at that. You gotta notice the problem and then try, right? And TJ is really great. He tried really hard and he solved this problem and he did it very kindly did it inside of our firm. He did a, we had a startup and residence program in our Cambridge, Massachusetts office. And inside of the, the, our Cambridge office, he creates a company called PillPack, which is a smartphone app that manages all your prescription meds and your non-prescription, by the way. And instead of going to the store and getting 16 bottles, or however many bottles you're supposed to open, and opening them and sorting them and stuff like that, TJ's company just sends you a roll of little envelopes that when it's 8 a.m. on Saturday morning, I'm pretty sure I know which one I'm supposed to open. It is 
impossible to take the wrong med at the wrong time, as long as you know what day it is and what time it is. But think about TJ. What did he do? Yeah, he solved that problem really well. A plus for solving the problem, but I bet I know 50 other companies that could have solved the problem. TJ started before problem solving. He looked at the world and said, hey, I'm a creative guy. I can, I can fix things in the world. Like he, didn't, he wasn't obliged to fix that. It wasn't even his problem to fix. He saw it and said, I can do better than that. Let's fix that, create a billion dollars. The second one of these is about what my friend Bob Sutton, a professor at Stanford, calls an attitude of wisdom. And so this is the kind of the counterbalance to confidence. But what Bob says is, with an attitude of wisdom, you, you try to balance your confidence in your knowledge with enough distrust that you want to continuously renew your knowledge. And there are leaders in the world, especially senior leaders who've been in their industry for a long time, who know for sure some things that aren't really true anymore. And so with this attitude of wisdom, you're always checking your version of reality against you know, the real version of reality so that you can up, update your knowledge. On the plane over here, I watched the, 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 the movie Eighth Grade. I'm not sure if you've, any of you have seen it, but it's a, a possibly accurate portrayal of what it's like to be a middle school kid in America these days. And I hate it when my clients say, well, you know, back when I was in college, it's like, OK, that's irrelevant. You know that, right? Or even, you know, <laughs> when my kids were in grade school, it's like, yep, don't want to know about it. Were there smartphones when your kids were in grade school? No? OK, different world, right? And so this is an attitude of wisdom to say, yeah, I know some stuff. And some of the things that I know might actually still be true, but I'm not going to get overconfident. I'm going to keep checking. I'm going to renew my knowledge every day. If you read the same blogs or you know, the, read the same newsletters as everybody else in your industry, they all know that stuff. Right? You can't gain competitive advantage by reading the same material that your competitors are reading. Right? And so when you're looking to renew your knowledge, you're looking for new insight, it's always great to look outside, to look in different geographies look in different industries and see things, not that necessarily you copy, but that you can adapt or shape or translate to your unique business. Right? And so here's an example of this. Very well-respected hospital. The guy who heads up the, the ICU, the intensive care unit, on the weekend, just for fun, he's watching the Formula One races. And so he's watching the pit crew, and he says, look at that. He says, that's kind of beautiful. He says, that's like, that's like ballet. He says, the car pulls into the pit. He says, each person, armed with exactly the right tools, approaches the car in exactly the right place, performs their task, pulls away, not bumping into anyone else, and the car pulls out. Seconds later, the car pulls out. He says, that is a little bit like my business, but the complete opposite. <laughs> he says, a gurney rolls in, you know, the, the, the kind of rolling bed. From the, in, from the operating room, rolls in, and he says, there is chaos for the first five minutes. Like, you know, shouted questions back and forth. So what he does, which is pretty extraordinary, he brings the pit crew into, into his hospital. And let me just say, this idea about an attitude of wisdom requires you to have humility. They brought this pit crew in just for a few days. And what happens, the data, and there's actually an academic report on this, the data says, Bringing in the Ferrari pit crew reduced technical errors at the Great Ormond Street Hospital by 42% and information errors by 49%. You have to have the attitude of wisdom. You have to be distrustful enough of your own knowledge. Like, he could just say, hey, we're the best hospital in the UK. We don't have to get better. They got a lot better because he looked outside. The third one's about simplicity. And I think this group probably understands this, but sometimes it takes some reminding because there's a lot of pressure to build more and more and more features in. The features are getting in the way. The other features, they're certainly getting in the way of simplicity. And so it takes confidence. You could say it takes creative confidence to say, oh, yeah, there's a, another 10 features we put in, but we're going to go for simplicity. There's this company called Nest Lab. They had exactly three products, which so simple product line to begin with. And they said, let's take these things that are super complicated in homes. 
smoke alarms, smart thermostat. You know, thermostats were great before they got smart, and then smart thermostats got really hard for a while, right? And then uh, home alarm system. Lacking many of the features of their competitors, their products are so simple that three years in, sold the company for 3.2 billion. Uh, that was three. Number four is about making big change with small experiments. When you speak to your boss, and as I said, even if you are the boss, I'd encourage you to use the phrase, I propose the following experiment, right? See how as soon as it's an experiment, look how much career insulation you've got around it already, right? Because if it fails, it's like, oh, well, that experiment doesn't work, but I got another experiment in mind, right? As opposed to, gee, I guess I'm a failure because my big idea turned out to suck, right? Like, I propose the following experiment. And so we're doing everything as an experiment. And if you engage your clients and the customers in the experiment, they'll go along with you. If you do enough experiments, you can make big change with small experiments. And then the last of these five is about painting a picture of the future with your idea in it. And I'll give you a quick example from our work. This wonderful opportunity to work with uh, one of the most beloved brands in America, Sesame Street. This is an app, a monster comes out with a completely blank face, and you get to make your monster. You get to put the eyes and the nose and the mouth on it. Our team comes up with this idea that they want Elmo to dance. That in the middle is kind of a break from all the monster making. You want to touch Elmo in the nose, and Elmo's going to dance around, and music will play. And they thought, hmm, this could be fun. And our friends at Sesame Street, they're like, no, I don't get it. Like, it's called Elmo's Monster Maker. Why is Elmo dancing? I don't get it, right? And so we have something we believe in, and our trusted partner doesn't see it. So this is where you invoke your design skills. This is where you have a chance to paint a picture of the future with your idea in it. It's 9 a.m. in California. We have a meeting at 10 a.m. We got one hour to sell our idea about Elmo dancing, about you know, the playing the music and Elmo dancing. And we agree that if we can't get a yes on our idea in today's meeting, we got to let it go. So just ask yourself, what would you do? If you had one hour to sell your idea, what would you do in your organization? A lot of people, a lot of companies would bring in their best salesperson. Like, OK, Rebecca, you can sell anything. Can you sell, you know, we got an hour. We can talk about this. Can you sell Sesame Street on our idea one hour from now? Right? That's a legitimate approach, right? Some people, a lot of people uh, in the mainstream business world would make a PowerPoint, right? Like, you know, 17 reasons why you should include Elmo dancing in your new app. We paint a picture of the future, right? And so in our painting a picture, we can't get Elmo, but we can get Adam. And there's Adam playing Elmo. You have to really squint to imagine him as a red furry character. You touch Adam in the nose, Adam dances around, music plays, like, hmm, yeah, I kind of see it now. We make this prototype in one hour. We ship it off to New York. We show it to them in the meeting, and they say yes. You probably thought you were looking at like an iPhone or something, but what you're looking at is Adam standing behind a piece of foam core <laughs> with a hole cut in it, and here's Colita, his colleague, who's, who's touching his nose and simultaneously filming with the webcam on her laptop, in a single take, by the way, ships it off to New York, we get a yes. If you can make a compelling vision of your future in an hour, don't spend the second hour. I mean, certainly don't spend a day or a week, because wouldn't you have been tempted to spend a day or a week? You have to be really clear what you're trying to accomplish. We were not trying to win over any customers. We were not trying to get Apple to list our app on the App Store. When you're working with Sesame Street, that's never a problem, right? We were trying to do exactly one thing, get a yes from our friends at Sesame Street. It only took an hour, and we got to yes. So what's the one hour version of your ideas? If you can paint a picture of the future with your idea in an hour, Think how many ideas you can float out into the world. So that was five ideas right, about creative competence. And if you can do those five things well, if you can take those five ideas to heart, it will go a long way towards helping you and your organization lead with your own unique creative confidence. Thank you very much.